Hey fourth graders, it's Mrs. Long again, and today we are going to be talking about the value of the digits when we're looking at numbers. It's really important that we understand the actual value of numbers. A digit within a number doesn't just stand for that digit. For example, if I have the number 437, the 3 doesn't stand for 3, it stands for 30, and it's important that we understand that because it is something, again, that we're going to use a lot within math, and then it's something that you're going to need to know and understand for your for your actual life. It's important that we understand the value of numbers. That's just going to be so helpful for you as you're moving forward. And so today, we're going to be looking at place value and how the value of digits are related to each other within the different places. And so let's start off with our basic um, hundreds, tens, and ones. And for today's lesson, I am going to be using our principal um place value cubes and so this is a file that you have access to within our math resources and um, this is something that i would highly recommend printing if you have cardstock which is that thicker paper or a way to laminate um, that will help it to last longer i printed it just on regular printer paper and um, and i colored it with a crown to make it easier to see okay and then um, so this is just something that can be really useful for you especially if you're a visual and hands-on learner visual and hands-on learners really need to be able to see and picture things and to manipulate them and so you can do that with these place value cubes okay so we're looking at this we have our ones cube all right because there's only one of them this is our 10 stick and you notice there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and this is our hundreds cube i'm not going to count each individual cube but you notice we have 10 rows of 10 which makes 100 right 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 all right so we also have a cube that represents thousands that you can actually fold into a 3d cube i don't have that one printed out right now so i'm going to be just working with hundreds, tens, and ones for the beginning of this lesson to kind of help you to see. So you guys have learned learning about place value since really kindergarten, first grade, okay? And so it's important that we're remembering and thinking back to those skills that we learned. We learned that each place can only have up to nine in it, right? I can only have up to nine ones because once I get to 10, that's a double digit number and I can't have two digits within one place, okay? So I can have up to nine ones in my ones place, so that's five, six, these are kind of sticking together, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yep, nine ones. Now if I add a tenth one, I have to take these 10 and exchange them for, a 10 okay so those 10 ones equal 1 10 now we're back to a single digit and if I have 10 tens that equals 100 and if I have 10 hundreds that equals 1000 and so you see a pattern right our number system is actually called the base 10 number system because each place works in groups of 10 it takes 10 of these to make one of these it takes 10 of these to make one of these it takes 10 of these to make a thousand it takes ten thousands to make a ten thousand that's why it's called a ten thousand right it takes ten ten thousands to make a one hundred thousand it takes ten one hundred thousands to make a million and so on and so on and so on and it's going to be that way all the way it, it just never ends because our number system never ends our numbers go on and on and on and on and on all right every single time you move up a place value it takes 10 of the previous one to make one of that one. So if I wanted to make 100, I would need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tens. And if I were able to sit there and stack them all right next to each other, you'll see that that will line up perfectly and make 100. All right, so what does that mean for fourth grade? Because this is something that you've learned before. All right, but I wanted to just kind of do the visual and the manipulatives to show it to you and to remind you. All right, and so now let's flip the page in my notebook. And today we're going to be, again, looking at how the values of the digits, what, we, what we're going to do with that. So let's say I have a number. Let's say I have the number 4,337. I have the number 4,337. 
Now, I have in here, remember I'm going to draw my little house. I'm kind of drawing it in a weird way. Sorry about that. That's not exactly what I meant to do. <laughs> All right, and then this house only has one kid, but we'll draw the rest of the house over here. All right. I don't know why I decided to draw it that way. That was a weird way to draw the house, <laughs> but there we have it. All right, so when I'm looking at this, I notice I have two threes. Do these two threes have the same value? Let's say I have this amount of money, the, the value of this three's amount of money, and you have the value of this three's amount of money. Do we have the same amount of money? They're both threes, right? I have three, you have three. They're not the same though, right? They don't have the same value because this three is in the tens place. So that means I have three tens or 10, 20, 30. And this three is in the hundreds place. So I have three hundreds, 100, 200, 300. So what $30 and $300 are most certainly not the same amount of money, right? And and I don't know if, if you were like this. I know my own children were like this and I'm sure I was too. When you're first learning about money and you're looking at the coins and if I give you five pennies or five nickels or five dimes or five quarters, like you're going to pick the one that you think is the prettiest because they're all five, right? But then you learned about coins and you're like, oh wait, I want the five quarters because that's the most money. Okay. And so this is kind of where we're looking at that value. Now, remember it takes 10 of these to make one of these. It takes 10 of these to make one of these. It takes 10 of these to make one of these. So if this three is worth 300 and this three, I'm going to draw a little arrow and this three is worth 30, how many times bigger is this three than this three? It's 10 times bigger. Each time you go up a place, it's 10 times bigger. And that is the case no matter what place the numbers are in. Every time it's moved up a place value, it's 10 times bigger because this is the base 10 number system. And so that's a really easy thing to remember. 10 times bigger, 10 times bigger. 30 is 10 times bigger than 300 because if I take 30 and I multiply it by 10, I get 300. Every time I multiply a number by 10, I can just add a zero to that number. That's like a really fun rule with tens. Okay. This is 10 times bigger. If I took the number and I wrote it like this, let's say I have um, 42,367 and I have another number. I have 43,267, and I'm looking at the value of the threes again. How many times bigger is the value of this three than the value of this three? Well, this three is worth 300. This three is worth 3,000. How many extra zeros do I have? I have one extra zero, so it's 10 times bigger. All right. Another way we could look at a problem where we're given two numbers is to stack those two numbers. This is one of my favorite ways to do it so that I'm really thinking about it in its terms of its place value. Okay. And then if I draw my like kind of little place value chart in here, all right, here's my three. Here's my three. How many places did I hop up? I hopped up one place and each place is 10 times Bigger. So again, it's really important that we're understanding the value of the digits because we can see, oh, we added one zero. That means I multiplied by 10. Here I added one zero means I multiplied by 10. And anytime you see one of these types of questions, you're going to look, okay, well, how many zeros did I add or how many places up did I hop? And each time that's 10 times bigger. Okay. Each place it's 10 times bigger. All right. Or 10 times smaller. If you're going backwards, if I wanted to know how much smaller is this three than this three, well, it's 10 times less, right? Because I've gone backwards in space instead of forwards in space. All right. And so that's what we're thinking about with this whole lesson that you're doing. And so as you're going through your book pages, you're going to be asked to write down the value of the two digits, just like we did here. And just like we did here and then evaluate how many times bigger is it? I'm going to bet most of the time the answer is going to be 10 times bigger. I can tell you one thing. It's always going to be a multiple of 10. It's going to be 10 times bigger, 100 times bigger. That'd be going up two places. A thousand times bigger would be going up three places. Can you see we're just adding zeros? All right. So that's, that's what you want to think about. It's always each space up in the place value chart is 10 times bigger. Why? Because it takes 10 ones 
to make a ton. It takes 10 tens to make a hundred. It takes 10 hundred to make a thousand. And so that is why every time you go up a place, it's 10 times bigger. All right, good luck with your lesson today, guys. If you need any help, please reach out to your math teacher. Definitely check out the practice resources that we have for you guys, and feel free to rewatch this video as many times as you need to in order to help you understand this concept. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you soon.